start with you on this next question. What specific actions would you take to improve the business climate for small businesses? I think we need to reform uh, the workers' compensation insurance program. I think we need to cut the B and O taxes for businesses. Create some sort of incentives to get get, get the private sector growing. I mean, that's who's going to sustain the state. They're they're. Their tax dollars and revenue generated, they create jobs. Those jobs put money back into the system. I mean, that's how you get it going. You have to give breaks to the businesses. James? Well, I, I, I concur with what Mr. Winters said about cutting the B&O and stopping new taxes. Again, um, Ms. Ralph is not here, but just for your information, her opening statement at last night's League of Women Voters, she just read right from her voter pamphlet. In the conclusion, she said she wants to foster a business climate that creates jobs and put people back to work. That's her words. Um, so what they did during this last session was they found themselves with a gigantic shortfall. They took I-960, the voter approved two years earlier, about the two-thirds majority. They basically betrayed the voters, shredded that, no sooner had the ink dried on that, and 77 new tax bills were, were being run, run through the uh, legislature with $800 million in new taxes. That is not the environment that's going to create new businesses. In fact, that's going to stifle business. I've walked around and seen the small businesses here, and they are just hanging on by their fingernails. James, we'll begin with you on this next question. A state representative has to be above reproach. Have you ever been banned or barred from a public event or public property, or have you had your membership revoked from a public nonprofit? The answer to that is a qualified yes. It has to do with an event where I stood up and held my school board accountable for an ideological biased program. I and a number of families challenged the school. And as far as nonprofits, I'll just spend a minute and give you a. When Ms. Clapman refused to allow this to be filled, Phil Rockefeller and Ms. Rolfes went down to Bainbridge Island Television and complained. And Bainbridge Island Television, being a good Democrat organization, nonprofit, you may call it, proceeded to fire my wife on an illegal grounds as the technical director at the city. I have since called out BITV. They're corrupt. Aaron, same question. Have you ever been banned or barred from a public event or public property, or have your membership revoked from a public nonprofit? No. <laughs> Never had any problems. Next question, Aaron, we'll begin with you. Do you think it was irresponsible for the incumbent, Ms. Rolfes, to increase government spending? Would you increase government spending? No, I would do everything I could to repeal prior tax increases. It's, that's one of my priorities. I mean, we're already burdened in this economy. Let's just cut cut back on our spending and, and take control of the de deficit we have and, and make sure we can get people back to work and boost the economy again. And then, then if it's good times, then you can move forward with getting back to special services that shouldn't be funded right now in the, in the hard times we're in. But as for right now, I would do everything I could to repeal tax increases. Could you repeat the question? Absolutely. Do you think it was irresponsible for the incumbent, Ms. Rolfes, to increase government spending, and would you increase government spending? Well, I do think it was irresponsible. I, I, admittedly, there has to be government spending. I have no question about that. But the problem, again, is not revenue spending. It's the size of the government. And yes, I believe it's irresponsible for Ms. Rolfes and her party to not take seriously the necessary steps to whittle down the size of the government organizations through the examples that Mr. Winters provided and I provided earlier about uh, privatization, about using things smart, about, for instance, going back to the unions 
when the, when the voters' I-960 was shredded, and Ms. Rolf has in her Democrat majority increased taxes, did they go back to the unions and say, by the way, that deal is mighty sweet you have where you pay 12 cents on the dollar for health care, and we the people are paying 88 cents. A lot of people would like that deal. Ms. Rolf has voted for that. I believe it was irresponsible. Next question, James, will begin with you. How have you been engaged in the broader Kitsap County community? Specifically, what community services have you performed? I have, uh, for, well, for 30 years, I did a lot of traveling when I was in the military, even though I was home-based out of Seattle. I've been involved uh, with my fine party, the Kitsap County Republican Party, for uh, many years. Helped in many campaigns, pounded signs, waved signs, served as an advisor. Uh, in, addition, in addition, I also um, have been a member of the employer, su employer support of the Garden Reserve, ESGR, supporting the uh, rights of military reservists interfacing with their employers. So I've spent a lot of time doing that. In addition, on Bainbridge Island, I've been involved in fighting engaged in spirited debates about fiduciary issues having to do with school bonds, fire bonds, and changing government. I've, uh, I used to work 10, 12, 14 hour days with my commute, and uh, I didn't have a lot of time to volunteer in the community anything like that but as of 2007 I've been trying to volunteer as much as possible on Tuesday nights for our church uh, youth program to provide security for the youth there and I just see that the kids kids are our future and we need to do everything we can to provide for them and, and this is a that's that's about the only thing I was able to contribute to as far as our local area.